Hello, friend. Yeah, in the last edition we had, in the number three edition on this series, we talked about the art of producing using Jacob's productivity paradigm model. And we had just a lot of lessons upon lessons, and uh, all of them have to do with productivity. And we are still on productivity. We are going to be looking at today edition on the topic that said the art of producing using a saw productivity paradigm model. I know you're already surprised hearing that name, a saw. Already your mind is telling you something, a saw. <laughs> Is this one a godly person? A saw. I have not seen any person bearing that name. Esau, Esau. But the truth is that Esau is a good personality. He happens to be a good brand. You know, when you talk about productivity from Genesis to Revelation, and you didn't mention Esau, then you are missing something up in the history of the people of God. Because if you go down through the book of Genesis, you discover that the man Esau later metamorphosed and become a huge brand. You cannot just water down. You cannot just spill him over or walk over him or relegate him to the background. So who is Esau? Esau was the one that Jacob cheated. Esau was the one that sold his birthright as we had it in the last episode. And Esau was also the one that Jacob took his birthright and also took his blessings from the father now the man became so hopeless on earth now i want you to understand this we are sharing this productivity series just to remind so many people out there that it doesn't matter what appears to be your own case somebody can say my own battle in life is in the spiritual balance okay if it is in spiritual balance the productivity you are expecting is not in the spiritual balance. It will download from there and come to the world concrete tangibility. You have to do everything spiritually possible and physically possible to make sure the productivity you so fight for must be downloaded into it concrete tangibility. So in the case of Esau, the father actually cost him. The father told him to his face, he said, the blessing that is meant for you are given to your brother. I have made your brother master over you. I have made you a slave to your brother. In fact, I have made you to serve your brother all the days of your life, you and your generation. He said, Esau, I have removed you from the blessings of the earth and the blessings of the heaven. I have terribly cost you. But there is something he added in Genesis chapter 27 verse 14. And that is my prime area of emphasis for this particular teaching today. You know what the father said? After the father has taken time to add together, multiply together all the causes, all the difficulties he has put his son onto. Do you know what the father said? The father said, but any day you become tired of his bondage. He said, you break loose from it. For me, that was a huge blessing. He said, any day, you become tired. You become so, you know, it, it, it gets you to the mouth. There's nothing you can do about it. He said, you break loose from it. Now, that is where we're going to draw our lessons from. He saw what was it that he did to become highly productive, superlative productive, that later on in life, when he met Jacob, Jacob gave him a gift of cattle. He rejected it. <laughs> Jacob made him a gift of maidens. He rejected it. Jacob made him a gift of security men. He rejected it. He offered to him CIA of his time. He rejected it. FBI, he rejected it. EFCs, he rejected it. All the security apparatus Jacob offered to him, he rejected them all. Why? He never rejected them in anger. He rejected them because himself was already a made man. <laughs> he was already a made man. He was already a living legend. He was already a living brand. The Bible said when he replied to Esau, and when he replied to Jacob, because Jacob was G3. Jacob was afraid that Esau was coming after him to destroy him and his family. <laughs> Esau told him, he said, brother, I guess you would need the security of my own men. 
because you are moving with multitude as a family. I guess that I need to give you some of my own men, some of those who are serving me, my own security personnel, my own FBI and CIA. They need to help to guide you and your family and take you people to wherever you are going to. So on that note, I'm going to give you men that will help you. I am not the one looking for assistance from you. I think you should be the one asking from one for me because I'm already made just the same way you are made. Listen to me. Esau had cause released over his head by his own father. It is possible the terrible situation you're passing through at the moment is simply because your father may have cost you or your mother may have cost you or an authority figure may have cost you or you may have done something to provoke cause to come upon you. And that is why you are not profiting from all your skills. That is why heaven over you is closed. That is why the earth is not releasing abundance as service to you. That is releasing tongues. That is why the air that brought other people with pleasure, when it comes upon you, becomes a kind of cooking gas on your skin. Listen to me. Check yourself very well because only you can tell yourself the real story. There are two people you cannot confuse on earth. In fact, there are three people you cannot confuse on earth about your situation. You cannot confuse God because God knows about you. He knows who you are. He knows all the things you have done in the open and in the secret. He knows the reason why you are passing through the experience you are passing at the moment. And he knows when it will come to an end. He also knows exactly what you need to do to make it come to an end. Listen to me, friend. You cannot confuse the devil. The devil knows who you are. He has account of all those your manipulation, all those your fast moves. He understood where you break the edge and the serpent has beat you and poured venom upon you. He knows exactly what you are passing through. He understood your social stigma. He knows your spiritual plight. He knows the impoverishing situation you are passing through. Listen, you cannot confuse yourself. <laughs> God is aware about your situation. Satan is aware about your situation. Then you, you are also aware of your situation. So what am I trying to say? When we talk about productivity, it is not all about how much you have as a capital in your hand. Because so many people have failed with much capital in the marketplace yesterday, even today, and even in the future, they are still going to fail. Because they have broken an edge somewhere. And the serpent has not only beaten them, the serpent has poured venom. Listen, this situation, if you don't do anything about it, this situation can swallow you. The serpent not only pour venom, it also swallows. That's the third dimension. If your situation now is that it has only beaten you, on the market, cut a sign. It is very important you understand where you have failed, where you have messed up. It is very important you understand where you have put a wrong peg in a wrong hole. It's very important you know where you have derailed. It is very important you understand where you need to go to make things together. Listen to me. It is very important you know the experience you are passing now could be the first dimension of your pain in life. It could be that the serpent simply beat you because you are broken and age. It is possible that there's somebody you are promised to marry and the person are giving you everything. The person are giving you all. Probably has school fees. Probably stolen from the parents and given to you. Help you travel abroad. Now you have reached your El Dorado and you feel that you are not a big boy. You just want to throw the person to the trash can. You say, yeah, my first guy. I am this. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. See, you cannot be smart all your life. The Bible said, whoever break an egg, the serpent will bite. Listen, if your pain could be that you have money, but you're not even enjoying it because you don't have the health to enjoy it. The doctor has stopped you from eating so many things. And even at that, your health is still deteriorating. Despite engaging the best specialists around the world, you are not getting better. Healing cannot come. If you like, go to the biggest man of God you think, the biggest oracle around. There are things that you cannot pay out. There are things you need to settle. There are things you need to set. You need to go back to where you mess them up and settle it. Because if blood cries after you, my brother, you are just a vagabond. If blood, blood cries after you, there is nothing you can do. Heaven and earth will reject you. 
Listen, there is offense a man will commit. God will practically pick you like a fowl and take you to the bush market and sell you. Listen, when he sells you, he can sell you to anything. There are people like you. He has sold them to long-term sickness that cannot be diagnosed. There are people like you. He has sold to them to what I call orizizibolohi. Orizizibolohi. Let me see the check. It comes upon you. Your head begin to quake. Begin to quake. When they diagnose it, they will not see anything. An ordinary doctor will say he's suffering from cerebral embolism. He's suffering from tax force or spy force. Listen, you have to come to a point where you tell yourself truth. You don't need to operate and live your life and lie all your life. You need to tell yourself truth. You need to make up your mind and go. Settle where you need to settle. Pay the dues you need to pay. If you don't do it, the judgment remains on you. Listen, in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the spirit, the spirit will hear his name and hear his blood. If your blood has committed, then your blood will be demanded in the pit of hell. If your name has committed, your name also will be demanded. And that is why you need to find a way. Certain things that you are doing with some business owners are doing with that much effort and they are producing. And you are doing it with much effort and nothing is happening. Check yourself. My brother said, check yourself. Something is wrong. Something is wrong deep. Check yourself. Are you an Esau? An Esau is that person that wears suits. And where he wears suits, suit fits him. He looks very gentle. He looks very handsome. But the truth is that when you check close to him, he is a non-entity. He is just a figure standing. He is a man of no consequence. He has nothing to offer to his generation. But that Esau that expired before this Esau that made Jacob is the Esau could be, that is the kind of Esau you could be at the moment. Listen to me. It is high time. You wake up. Stop deceiving your steps. Stop going on 21 days praying and fasting. Stop going on 30 days praying and fasting. Stop going on 80 days praying and fasting. Stop committing the one they call suicide. Listen, you don't intimidate God with fasting and prayer. You don't intimidate God with fasting and prayer. You have to come to terms and discover that it is not your fasting that moves God. It is not your prayer that moves God. No matter the kind of tongues you go and learn, no matter how you speak it, no matter who speak it, call it corrosive tongues, call it antiquated song, call it tsunami tongues, it does not move God. If you are not righteous, if your hand is soiled with blood, then you are a goner. Esau discover that he has lost it. The father told him to his face, my son, you have lost it. He said, but when you become tired of his burden, oh, you have to break out of it. Are you not tired? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for the serpent to pour you venom? Once he pours you venom, then you are going to die gradually, but surely. If he pours you venom, then you are going to die gradually, but surely. In fact, the last stage is that he will swallow you. You become a Congo meat. He will eat you up as a dinner. Listen to me. See, if the situation over you at the moment is so terrible, so devastating a plight that you have done everything humanly possible, nothing is working out. You've done everything clinically possible, nothing is working out. You consulted all spiritually around, nothing is working out. Have you consulted God? It is high time you go to the presence of God because only in his presence, when you fully submit yourself, the Bible said, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, God will not forget. God cannot abandon, God cannot afford to work out on you when you come into his presence with a contrite spirit and a broken heart. God will not play with you. He will not, he, he will listen to your prayer when you come into him submissively. Listen to me. For the Bible said, say, if the people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek me. He said, I will hear their prayer, I will hear their land. I will restore things they have lost. Listen to me. It is not yet over. Because the only person that can say it is over is God. As long as you can hear me now, and if you look up, you see that the heaven is still blue. You look down, you see that you are still standing on planet Earth. You are still with your flesh and blood intact. My brother, your case is not difficult. Your case is not impossible. Go back to the presence of God. Submit yourself in prayer. Begin to call upon the God of Jacob, the God of Esau, that God that broke him loose from the bondage of slavery and set him on a high standard or high towers.
he become a good entrepreneur of his time. He became a man that was made. He became a brand that stood out on his own. He became a man that other depended on. He became a man that had something to offer in the hall of productivity. I strongly believe that this few words we have shared from the lesson of Esau is going to prompt you up on your feet. It's going to put you on a pedestal to look for a solution, not just a complaint. Look for solution, not just a complaint. If the man of God you have as a pastor over your life is not praying you out, is not capable of praying you out, my brother, go to God. God cannot fail. Let every other man fail. God cannot fail. And on this note, I want you to believe that God is targeting you for success. He's targeting you for a big time showcase. You are going to be the next star to be celebrated on the scene. I release that grace to become the grace for excellence, the grace for acceptance, the grace for speed, the grace for recovery. I release it upon you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive it. Listen. Don't just, share, don't just listen to this message alone. I want you to share you with your friends because humanity must be delivered. There are so many people that are engaged in different gulags who are suffering for nothing, who are suffering because blood of innocent people are crying over them, crying over their destiny. You need to go back, share this video on your wall. Encourage people to listen to it. Encourage your friend to listen to it. And before you sign out, I would like you to look at that red button. Subscribe. Press on that red button. Because that is the way we keep getting feedback to know what God is using his own message to do in the life of people. Mm. I celebrate you. I remain your own pastor. Pastor Richie. Felix is my name. God bless you richly. In Jesus' name. Amen.